Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna take a quick look at software normalization, a feature in the software asset management application. I'll just present an overview here as this is actually a topic that we discuss in one of the courses that I teach, which is software asset management fundamentals. Needless to say, this feature works pretty much the same way as it does in hardware asset management. That is by using a central service now curated content service. And by utilizing this service, we can take uh, an easy and a big step towards ensuring that our software installation data is consistent and accurate. One of the main objectives of software asset management is knowing what your compliance position is. That is reconciling your software installations with your software assets, or in other words, your entitlements or licenses. For example, do you have enough licenses? And there's a pretty good chance that the installation data that you have will come from different sources, such as ServiceNow Discovery, manual imports, integrations with other applications, and so forth. And each of these will record installation data a little bit differently. For example, Microsoft Access 2013 may be recorded as Microsoft, Microsoft Access, MUI, English 2013, 1504569 which is not the way we record the software license itself, which may just be Microsoft Access 2013. So therefore, we need a way to reconcile this data about our installations to the standard way we record our software product models. Now, the way in which we do this is by using discovery models. Every software installation is matched to a discovery model. And if no discovery model exists, we create one automatically. And when we talk about normalization in software asset management, we mean normalizing discovery models. And these normalized values are then associated with a software product model. And we can thereby match the installations we have with our product models. So therefore, for example, we could have three different software installations with three different discovery models, all containing the same normalized values and therefore all connecting to and pointing to the same software product model. So let's take a look to see how to set this up. So the first thing you'll need to do is to activate the content service, just like in hardware asset management. There is a separate module here. You just come here, accept the terms and conditions and opt in. And when you do that, you can also specify exactly what data you want to get from the content service and likewise, what data you want to share with the content service. If you expand these, you can see the specific fields in each of these tables. And this will activate a whole collection of scheduled jobs that will go ahead and check to see if there are any updates in the content service on a weekly basis. And if there are, download them. We'll have a look at this these scheduled jobs are in just a moment. But as I said, there's a whole collection of tables that are updated that are part of this content service. Um, we can take a look at a few of them right now. So for example, the first one here is software publishers. If we have a look at a record here for Microsoft, it's pretty basic. It's just a reference to Microsoft or specifically a reference to the manufacturer in the company table. Okay. We have a look at the software product you can see there's quite a few records in here over 300,000 so there's a pretty good chance that the software that you are uh, that you want to normalize it's going to be located here in the content service we can take a look at Snagit for example you can see there's a few different um, well, not versions of Snagit but different components I suppose because we're not looking at versions yet if we open up uh, this product record itself you can see it's just the name of the product. You can see there's also references to the product type and the product classification, which is also part of the content service. If we go ahead and have a look at a third table, the software product definitions table, this is where you'll actually start getting into the versions for specific software. This is actually used more for uh, connecting software entitlements or your licenses. You can see there's a, a reference here to a publisher part number or an SKU. So if you get that, as part of your ordering process uh, that will help you uh, create software entitlement records uh, a lot more easily. This is the table here that contains the scheduled jobs. So I filtered this list to show only the ones that are related to software asset management. And you can see that there's different scheduled jobs for different tables. 
So the first thing we can do to test this out is just to create a new software model. So I'll go ahead and create a new record here and specify TechSmith as a publisher and then snag it as a product. And then I'll go ahead and specify a specific version of that. Okay, I'll say any version that starts with 12. So 12.0, 12.0.1, 12.0.2, etc. We'll talk a little bit more about this later is specifically how these fields here, the version condition, the edition condition, et cetera, and that version number uh, relate to the discovery map, uh, that field just above it. All right, so if I go ahead and save that record, we can see here we're pulling data from the content service, data that's actually already in our ServiceNow instance that's been downloaded already from the content service into a lifecycle table. And we're getting some of that data and putting it or referencing that in this related list here. Okay, which means our content service is working and it's, you know, we're matching uh, the software model version to data already in the content service. Now, one of the other things that's gotten from the content service is discovery maps. We can see this field here that I've left blank at the moment. So I've gone ahead and specified a version condition that starts with version 12, but we can actually take advantage of data that we have in the content service as well to fill this information in for us so we don't have to do it manually. So if I open up uh, the, uh, the discovery map uh, link here, uh, we can see we've got various references to TechSmith Snagit and different versions. But what I'll do, I'm just gonna go back to the original discovery map table in another tab here without any filters. We'll just search here for product, snag it, where the version contains 12. And we can see we've got a few different hits here, okay? Uh, for Windows versions and for 12 and 12.0, 12.3, etc. okay? So we can just pick one of these to use in our software model. So I'm gonna pick uh, this one here, the one that ends with 534. So if I put that in there and just tab out, you can see that those fields underneath it have been grayed out, they're now read only, and the values that we have in there actually come from the discovery map. So the discovery map is just connecting uh, this particular software model to software installation data. Okay, this is the connection, this discovery map. Again, this is something that we get also from the content service. And we'll see why this is important in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is just save this record. And I'm going to go ahead and import this simple spreadsheet here into the software installation table. Okay, so you can see you've actually got two versions of Snagit, uh, .4 and a .5 version there installed on the same computer, it doesn't matter, it's just a demonstration to show you how we will create discovery models because they are the ones that will be normalized. Discovery models, again, are matched to specific software installations. So we've got Windows 11 Pro there, uh, we've got Microsoft Access, MUI English 2013, so what I was just discussing earlier, and if you note the, the version number here, it's uh, a real wacky one, 15.0.4569, etc. And we've got some homegrown software there from Soft Inc. and a version there, all installed on one computer. And when we do that, we can go to our software installation table here, and we can see we've got those five records. Okay. Let's take a look at each one quickly. Let's have a look at the first one, Windows 11 Pro. Okay. We get what we've imported. Okay, it's very basic. But the key here is that we've got a discovery model field here. So that record has been created. That didn't exist before. It was created as part of that import process. And if we have a look at that record. You can see we've got a normalization status there of normalized. So again, when we talk about normalization in software asset management, we're talking specifically about normalizing discovery models, these records. We're not normalizing the software model. We're not normalizing the installation data. Well, kind of, but indirectly. But we're not normalizing the installation record itself. Rather, we're normalizing the discovery model. Okay, and this is probably the main purpose of this discovery model is that we can get all kinds of installation data 
recorded in our instance and imported, but we need to find a way to reconcile, to match that to standard values that we have for our software models. And this is how we do it. So if you look on the right-hand side, we can see the data that we've imported or that we've discovered. But on the left-hand side, we've got the normalized values for publisher, product, and version. And note the version, the normalized value of 11, that's not anywhere really close to this, the discovered version of 10.0.22000. Okay, let's go ahead and open up another record here. Uh, that's the first Snagit one, the 0 0.5 version. We can see we've got a discovery model there also. This time we've got a normalization status of partially normalized. Okay, so we'll have a look at this record a little bit closer shortly. Okay, we're missing the version number here. We weren't able to make a connection with the discovered version with the normal version. Okay, for whatever reason. We don't have it in the content service, most likely. Okay, so if we go to the other version of Snagit here, the 0 0.4 version, uh, we can see the discovery model is a different discovery model. Okay, they're both kind of referencing Snagit 12, but we've got uh, a 0 0.4 version for the discovery model. Okay, again, created automatically and also with the status of partially normalized. Okay, we'll come back to those records shortly. If we have a look at the one for Microsoft Access, we've got a normalized value there. So in other words, we actually have that in our content service. We know about it. We know that the discovered version, if it contains anything kind of resembling that, it's version 2013. You can't actually see the or view the, the normalization rules as such from the content service, how the system actually matches um, discovery models to what we have in the content service. That is all hidden. But if you find that you have a, only a partially normalized record like we saw before, or if you don't find a match at all, then um, the content service team will look at those records and potentially add them so that uh, you'll have uh, uh, an update to the content service uh, a little bit later. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at our homegrown software one here, we can see there's a match not found. We know nothing about this. It's not in the content service. So when we have a situation like this, we can actually come to these pattern normalization rules and create a new rule, basically a new normalization rule, if you like. So for our homegrown software, we don't necessarily want to add it to the content service because no one else should know about this. It's our own proprietary software that we're using internally only then um, we don't want to use the content service. Uh, we can go ahead and create a normalized rule here. Okay, so at the top, we specify our discovered details and down the bottom, we specify our normalized values. Okay. These pattern normalization rules should only be used for homegrown software, not for regular software, because that regular public software you know, should be available in the content service. If, it's, if not, then the team uh, can add it. Okay, so let's come back to our discovery model for Snagit 12.0.5. Okay, we saw that it was partially normalized. And the reason for that is that we were only able to reconcile or normalize the publisher and the product, not the version. Okay, so this presents a, a problem for us for software asset management for reconciling our software installations to our software entitlements or licenses you know, using the, the software model because at the moment we won't be able to do that because we're missing a version. We're not we're not working with a normalized record here. Okay. So if we actually go to the software model record here for Snagit, okay, we've got our discovery map. So we're basically trying to pick up everything that starts with version 12, okay? But if we don't have a version in our discovery model, then this software model won't be able to be matched to those software installation records, dot five and also dot four, okay? There's actually a link here called show matching discovery models. So if you click on that, there's nothing there, okay? If you have a look at the conditions here, closely, okay, where the product is Snagit, language is anything, 
platform is anything, addition is anything, but version starts with 12. So in other words, these um, software models are mapped or matched to discovery models using those normalized values. That's why we have them. Okay. So what we would need to do is, well, we've got a few options here. We could wait until the content service is updated, but that could take a little while, one, two weeks or something. And then when you do, when you do that, there will be uh, an option here to um, yeah, normalize these values in the content service. There'll actually be a little uh, button, uh, an icon next to the normalization status field that you can click on to kind of try normalizing this record again. Uh, the other thing that you could do, as I said, is what well, you could create a pattern normalization rule, but that should be reserved for homegrown software only. So we're going to rule that option out. Okay. Another option will be to use machine learning. And we're going to take a look at this in the next video. And the last option is just to come here and then just specify the version number manually. Okay, simple. Okay, save it. And then we have a normalization status of manually normalized. So now, if we come back to this list here and refresh it, we're able to pick up that 12.05 discovery model and through that, the software installation. And we will do the same thing for our 12.0.4 discovery model so that both of those versions, those software installations, both point to the same software model through the discovery model. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. So I'll come back here to our list of discovery models and go to 12.04 and say the normalized value is 12 and save that. And now if we come back to our software model record, and again, come down to that link, show matching discovery models. We're now picking up both. Okay, so in other words, again, both of those installations, slightly different versions, but both of them pointing to the same software model. So that's how we can use normalization in software asset management to normalize software installation records using discovery model records and using the content service. Uh, to connect them to the software model and thereby through that to our software assets or software entitlements. But that is a topic for any of you who want to attend the Software Asset Management Fundamentals course. Hope to see you there. See you.